Eva here. I just wanted to share with you that I, this is my first company that has contacted me asking me if I would like to test out their products. So that's quite exciting. I'm just under 2000 subscribers on my YouTube channel and I got this really nice email. So I got this email from Pragati Sharma and the headline was, we want to send you our super cool colors. So of course I had to open that email and it was from a company called vivivacolors.com and she writes to me, um, I hope my email finds you well. My name is Pragati and I work with Viviva Colors. We make the most vibrant and portable watercolors in the world. What's more, our colors are all handmade by the women in our local community using sustainable practices. So that sounded, you know, very interesting to me. Our colors are designed to be easy to use and let you paint anywhere without a mess. The idea is to make art more fun and less daunting. I'm writing to you because I loved your work, blah, blah, blah. And I think you'll really enjoy them. And then she asked for my shipping address and I go in on the website, of course, the Viva Colors to check out the company, make sure that it's legit and things like that. I also check on Amazon to see if they carry this brand and they do. Um, I'll have a link below. But anyway, I just got my package in the mail and here you can see I got a sketchbook and then I got these Viva color sheets. I haven't opened it yet. I thought I would open it with you and we'll take a little look together and I'll do a little painting to just to test it out and we can see if we think this is something that might be fun for us to use. So that's what I wanted to do today and I hope that we can find out that this is a wonderful product because I mean poor India is having a, a terrible time right now. I'm filming this at the end of April and you know they are, are just uh, devastated by the COVID-19 and don't have a handle on it at all. So here here are the Viviva sketchbook and the Viviva color sheet. So I got a sketchbook and I think these colors are meant for like on the go and uh, when you're out plein air painting in your sketchbook and things like that. So this is um, an A4 landscape format. So that's 5.8 times 8.3 inches or 14.8 times 21 centimeters. There's 64 pages, which means there's 32 leaves, I mean sheets. And then it says Lesebo design paper, 240 grams, which is 120 pound. It's hot pressed and it's acid free and it's ivory. Premium handmade sketchbooks is what it says. Four leather bound so it's vegan friendly opens fully flat handmade with love made by locals in our community and eco-friendly made from eco-friendly paper let's see viva colors is founded by two brothers our mission is to make art more convenient and spread the joy of painting to everyone. We make the Viviva color sheets, the revolutionary watercolors in form of a small booklet. We are a socially conscious family owned business. Our products are handmade by local women in our community. We welcome you to the Viviva family. And it is manufactured by Viviva Color Sheets Limited in Gangapur, on Gangapur Road, Nashik, India. So it's made in India. So it's just a black cover and it has one of these handy little straps so you can keep it closed and let's take a look so it opens like this opens flat like they said here and then let's see there's one kind of I don't know maybe that's a 90 pound or something like that just a cover sheet and then here is the pages that we can paint on hmm, I don't know about flat let's see and it feels I mean, it's it's hard pressed, so but it does have a little bit of texture. You can probably not see that. Maybe I just need to find. Let's just try and see if I can find a place where. Aha! Here we go. Now it'll lay flat. So I just need to break it in. Looks like like that. Okay. Yep. Now it'll lay flat. So it takes you know. I mean, that's you know, it's a new book and everything. So you have to kind of break it in a little bit. But that's fine. And yeah, they're kind of ivory. I. There, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised because I was afraid they were gonna be like really yellowish. But see, that's Archer's 300 pound cold pressed paper. And I don't know if you can see, it's probably not that easy to see on the camera, but it has a little bit of texture, but it's definitely not cold pressed, it's hot pressed. So we'll see how we deal with that. So excellent. And then here are the Viviva color sheets. 
Revolutionary New Watercolors Original Sketcher Set, 16 colors plus a water brush. And here are the colors, and we'll take a look at those. Super Vibrant, hand make, made and baked in the sun, made from premium dyes, so it's made by from dyes, so that means that they're not light fast, but this is for sketching, and in your sketchbook, it doesn't matter. But I would not use these colors, and I don't think they're meant for that. I wouldn't use them to paint, you know, my paintings that I frame and sell, because they would fade. Ultra portable, smaller than a cell phone, long lasting, comparable to half pants, biodegradable. It's mostly just paper. So our store, Viva color sheets are revolutionary watercolors in form of a booklet. They're designed for professionals and hobbyists the like to paint anytime, anywhere. Our mission is to spread the joy of painting to everyone. And then conforms to the ASTM D4236 and again manufactured by Viva Color Sheets in India. So let's open this little puppy and see what it looks like. So here's a little booklet and here is a nice little water brush and you know water brushes so here's the brush head and then what you do is you unscrew it like this and then you fill the handle with water so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do that off camera so it'll make a huge mess here and that's not fun to watch but I'm gonna do that and then we'll use that one to paint with since that's what we got and then here is a little piece of thread and that's so we can open I like that. And so far the packaging was just, you know, paper. I like that. Nowadays, you know, we have to be conscious about all this plastic that we're throwing up around everywhere. We've got to get away from that. And then it is shrink wrapped. Kind of clear, clear wrap. There's that. And then they are like this. And let's see. There's that little thing, and then there's that little thing. Okay, so what colors do we have? We have crimson, deep pink, vermilion, dusk orange, chrome yellow, yellow ochre, burnt umber, burnt sienna, light green, sap green, and then I like that they have these sheets in between. There's double here in the middle. Viridian, peacock blue. Wow, peacock blue. You could have fooled me. Persian blue, violet. Look at the violet, it looks green. That's interesting. That'll be fun to try. Magenta doesn't look magenta at all. And then slate black. And that's the 16 colors. Need new Viva color sheets? Visit their website and use below coupon code for exciting offers. Viva form. Anyway. What's here? Stick mixing panel here if required. I don't know what that means. For the joy of art, this page is intentionally left blank. Share your art with us, hashtag Reviva Colors, and follow us at Reviva Colors on Instagram. We would love to hear from you. Write to us at support at revivacolors.com. All right, so what I thought we were going to do is let's use our beautiful little sketchbook that I got. And on the first page, I'm gonna swatch out all the colors, and I wanna swatch it on this paper that you know I have in the sketchbook so now I can feel here it's very very smooth here it has a little bit more tooth very smooth a little bit more tooth so that's interesting so let me just fill my little brush with water and then I'm gonna have something else underneath here this I just put the red mat underneath here just so that it looks a little prettier but for once I'm gonna get water out and stuff I'm gonna get one of my regular mats cutting mats that I use for painting on so, unfortunately for this part of the demo, I had to resort to voiceover, but here's the brush. I filled up the handle with water, and it was super easy. There's a little opening there where the black part is. You squeeze the brush handle, and then you soak up water that way. And by the way, the brush is made in Japan by the Kuritake Company, and as I have mentioned already, it's a really good brush. I'm very impressed with it. So here I'm just gently squeezing the brush and making sure that the water is flowing so I'm ready for the swatching. So I'm going to start with the crimson and then I'm going to go to the deep pink and the beautiful colors. After that is the vermilion and then we come to a glorious color which is dusk orange and then next is the chrome yellow and then we have the yellow ochre. Then we come to the burnt umber. And the next one is the burnt sienna. I'm making sure to clean the brush in between each color. And then we come to light green. And the next one is sap green. That's a little bit more muted. 
and then we're coming to viridian it's got blue green and then we're coming to peacock blue which you would never guess when you look at it it looks red but it's beautiful blue and then after that is the persian blue and then we have violet which look green in the swatch card and the next one we have is the magenta and it's a very strong color beautiful also but it really loaded with pigment and then the last one is the slate black which is a blue beautiful black okay so just off camera painted a little strip over my black marker here and not surprisingly they all seem to be very transparent and i base that also on the fact that you know they look so different in their dried format and that's typical of transparent colors if there's white in it which makes them more opaque then they look more like their true color when they're dry so anyway i'm i'm very impressed with that so the other test that i thought we should make is i'm going to try and lift out and see how they lift so i'm using using my usual tool for that and that is a short flat masking fluid brush from creative mark that's what i used to use for lifting out so it's not a scrubber brush and it won't damage the paper unless you like scrub like crazy i'm just going to scrub a little bit there dab rinse my brush i have this little system where you know scrub three times with clean water dab in between and then one more time so it's just don't have your brush dripping wet just a damp brush there we go i it looks like i get a little bit of peeling on on the off the paper but that lifted back pretty well so i'm just going to go and do all of them that's boring to watch and then we'll talk about it when i'm done okay so i lift it out and most of them lift out pretty okay there's uh, down here we get a little bit more staining with the peacock blue persian blue violet magenta and the slate black but that's not unusual and the only thing I'll, I'll say is that it feels like the paper does peel a little bit when you scrub so this this paper is not meant for too much lifting up or scrubbing and that's not unusual for a sketchbook either and then I just uh, looked and now I'm a little bit wiser remember I said here it said stick mixing pan panel here if required and stick this to the main booklet it says peel off the adhesive tape and see then that way you can do like this and then you can mix your colors here isn't that pretty neat that's pretty nifty so that's that and then i also noticed that in the front here these colors belong to so you can write your name and then you know if you want your instagram handle or you know it could do a phone number or whatever so anyway be amazed the pigment on these colors is highly sat is highly saturated that means the colors you see here are different from their actual color on paper yeah that is true we found that up uh, we got you covered the partition between the colors have a special water repellent coating to avoid sticking when wet and that i also found to be true and our recommendation let the colors dry before closing the color sheet yeah that makes sense super safe these color sheets are safe to use but please do not ingest them oh you should wash your hands with soap after use have fun okay so the next thing i'm going to do is so this side of the paper was the more smooth and i'm just going to do one little or you can see here my black liner here bled through a little tiny bit not much but anyway i'm gonna do a little tiny little sketch of something here and uh, try and use the colors and this mixing sheet so stay tuned while i get myself set up so i just uh, sketched in a little raven uh, easy quick little sketch we can do i gave the raven a little masking fluid in the eye so that i don't have to be careful about painting around and uh, if you don't have masking fluid you can either try and remember it so not paint over the eye or you can just use some white paint afterwards but anyway i'm gonna use just a little water brush here and of course these colors and i i stuck on this little palette like they recommended and i am going to use the colors i'm going to use are i'm gonna use some of the viridian the peacock blue persian blue probably some violet magenta and maybe some slate black for the bird and then i'm gonna use some of the other colors for just the surrounding areas just so we get as much spray as possible so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wet the bird like here over the eye the head and a little bit so down here everything except the wings i guess is what i'm doing and i'm going to try and let the colors mix and mingle on the paper that's why i want to put a little bit of water on and you have to remember this is probably not going to turn out to be a masterpiece that would be very 
very, very highly unlikely because, you know, I'm just testing out what we can do here. And color-wise, let's get some light green on. I'm gonna take a little bit of light green. I'm gonna put some of that on here. That, and then I'm gonna take some of the peacock blue some of that on. Ooh, that's a very strong color. And you know, I want to let them kind of mix and mingle because I'm using this water brush, you know, things. And then uh, let's do some Viridian here. And I'm squeezing my brush a little bit to get some more water out. And I want to have a soft edge there towards the, the beak. I guess I can just go like this. I'll be okay. That's better than getting an edge. So, and then let's see if we can soften here. Uh, peacock blue. What about some violet? Let's get some violet here. You know, uh, ravens, they are iridescent. So that's what I, that's why I'm trying to uh, use these colors here. I just painted a raven painting that's in the exhibit out at the airport here, where I live, Truckee Airport. And I used these types of colors. Let's get some Persian blue here. I used these types of colors as an underpainting. There we have it. There. Okay. And then um, I think I want maybe some of that violet up here. And I'm squeezing again, hoping to get some more water out. This and take some of it off, and there. Yeah, I think I want to just get a little push of blue here, and let's run it into here like that. And then we have that dark tail there. Let's see. I wanted to get some magenta on also. That magenta is so strong. So let's get some magenta on here. See, when you get it full strength, you have to be careful because it almost looks brown. Then. And I'm just running a little bit of that magenta in here. It's just going to be, you know, it's not a photorealistic raven by any stretch of the imagination. It's just fun. And we can paint the wing. I think some more of that light green. Just to get a little color variance. And then let's take some Viridian and run that in and see if we can blend them, blend them together. Go, and some peacock blue. Oh, that's gorgeous. Gorgeous. There we have it. And then for his little legs, let's do some uh, burnt umber. gonna go too crazy on the legs there. Dumbo. Here. It has a good tip, this little brush. And let's do some of the slate black while this is hopefully still damp so we can kind of get a little bit of a shadow on the back of the leg down here like that. And clean out the brush. And I just want to see if I can soften there a little bit. And then we need to get the beak. And I think I want to do the beak. Start with the slate black here. dark on right here. It does have a really nice tip. Probably will get worn over time, but... And I think we can also do the top of the beak. It's too dark, so... And I want to do a little bit like... And the same here. Just fuzz it out a little bit. All right, and we can do some of that dark really dark slate black around the eye and it's reinforced here a little bit more all right and now i want to uh, obviously make the raven more black but i want some of the color underneath to shine through so we'll see how that goes so i got slate black on my brush here and i'm just kind of going in the direction of the feathers and just kind of unifying And it would probably be good to have a little bit of a bigger brush for this kind of stuff. But we're just pretending that we're out sketching and we want it to be as lightweight 
as possible. So I'm just running some of that slate black in kind of a transparent manner over and I want to try and see if I can get like a little bit of not so perfect edges there because you know the feathers are a little ruffled on these birds. And the same up, same here. darker there and again you know don't lose all the color you have underneath you want to get you know some of that nice iridescent feeling to them and let's see do a little bit more of that light green here and peacock blue and get some of this slate black and some more of that slate black. Squeeze some, oops. There we go. There we go. That's more like it. And then here, let's get some of that in. Just to give it a little bit more character. And some more slate. And underneath here. There, I like that. And let's get some of that real dark into the tail here. There. So we don't want to lose all the color that we started out with. We want to still have some of that brightness. It just has to be bit more modified. Get some of that nice black in here, around the eye, around the beak there. Have the beak here a little bit darker. There. I like that. That looks pretty, pretty fun. So now we need to let it dry and then I'll take the masking off. But while that happens, I kind of like what we have going on down here. Just soften that a little bit. Let's get some vegetation. And I did, I do have my credit card because I wanted to see how this paper holds up to my credit card abuse that you know I like to do. So let's use some of the colors we haven't used yet. Let's use the sap green here that was very muted. Let's use that one. It's a pretty color. Yeah, here you definitely, it'd be nice to have a brush that had, you know, can hold a little bit more water and stuff. Let's see, what else did we have? Uh, we have some burnt umber. That looks, it's not quite as, um, we have some burnt sienna. And then let's get some of the, get some of the slate black in for a little shadow. can get a little bit of scraping in. Then let's do really, really light blue. So there, I think I want to take the Persian blue and I just want to have a little bit of an indication of a sky color. A little darker over here. Just like that. Squeeze it. Just a little bit of color. Yeah, you can see here it would definitely would be very helpful if we had a bigger brush so we could get, you know, bigger area. But again, for sketch, it's fine. So now I put a little tiny bit of that slate black on to just work on that beak and they have kind of like a little bit of a hook over. All right, so I'm going to let it dry and then we're going to take the masking off and finish off with the eyes. Every 
in its dry. It faded back a little bit. That's okay. So took the masking off with my rubber cement eraser. And ooh, now comes the scary part. I usually like to do a little bit of... Let's do some burnt shenna. Just a tiny bit. I like to do that. Something warm, either red or a little burnt shenna or something like that. Warm color around the eye. A little bit like that. And then I'm going to take and have very concentrated just on the tip here. Again, this does have a very nice tip. I really like that. The only thing I'm missing is, you know, I I, I would I have some uh, other water brushes that are bigger that I could bring along if I, you know, was going out on location to paint. And so I'm just dabbing in very carefully that I, and you know, I don't want to see very much of that burnt shinner. It's just underneath and it gives a little bit of warmth to an eye. I think it's pretty good. Okay, so then we have the little beak we needed to just kind of fine tune a little bit. And I think we need to get it just a little bit more. There's that. And again, you know, this is just a little sketch, so we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves or on this raven. And maybe just a little bit more. I think I should just stop fuddling with it. I think this is okay for a little sketch, you know, and paper didn't buckle too bad. It'll always buckle a little bit. And I do like to paint with a lot of water, as you know. So the one thing I didn't test out was, let's just, let's try the sap green here. And let's try and put some, oh, see how nice that is. I wanted to just try, I didn't test out the little mixing area. Can see how it beats up a little bit? So, because that's what I was wondering. Kind of felt like paper, but it's it's uh, at least coated with something and then let's just I don't like to you know I, I rinse my brush when I go into another color but I just thought I'd just um, see what what it would be like to mix on the on the paper there and that works out beautifully let's put a little bit of peacock blue in here and see what we get nice so maybe I'll just put a little bit of that on there it's more just to use it up than anything there we go and I think I'll call this done. So anyway, I really like that, that that works out so nicely and you can just wipe it down with a little bit of water. Yeah, that's perfect. Really practical. So I, I would say I give this a thumbs up and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write here on the screen here so that you can see what the price is. I'm going to go on Amazon and give you the Amazon price. And yeah, absolutely. If you're looking for something that is really super lightweight to travel with and I would you know I'm not a fan and that's just a personal preference I'm not a fan of hot pressed paper it does have a little bit of tooth on the one side I don't know what this lessable design paper is but I can try and look it up normally it would say if it's acid free but normally it would say if it's cotton I do think that they do make cotton paper sketchbooks also but I do not think this one is so I just uh, googled the Lesbo design paper that they have here and that is actually Lesbo design is an uncoated paper range featuring high opacity and haptical surface and it's made from wood free chlorine free pulp TCF and it's neutrally sized. So and I do think the company history uh, we've produced paper since 1693 and the art of paper production is a fine old tradition. Lesbo mill it's uh, okay I thought so. So it's Swedish paper believe it or not. It's Swedish this paper. So there you have it and I hope you found this helpful and you can go online if you want to get it. So the color sheets here, this particular little color sheet with the 16 colors that I demoed for you, they run 1974 on Amazon and let's see the sketchbooks. So a small sketchbook, I think smaller than this one, size A6 with 100% cotton, a 300 gram cream colored paper runs $16.95. So it's not the same as this one here. And th so that's on Amazon, they found that. They have this paper, Swedish made ivory paper, hot pressed, 120 pounds, exactly the same. So this is 120 pound, pound paper. I mentioned that earlier, but it's not 100. So it's a little bit lighter than the 140 pound that 
we often uh, buy in the uh, Archie's and other watercolor paper brands. So that one in a square format, not in this one, I couldn't find this particular format there, but in square format where it's seven and a half by seven and a half inches square with 64 page pages. So anyway, but you can, you know, look yourself. I'm gonna do a few more sketches in here and I'm definitely uh, totally uh, up for taking that along. I, I think this one will be great for when I wanna do little um, botanical sketches of the wildflowers that I see because there I don't mind so much the smooth surface. That's all I have to say. Thumbs up from here. As long as you know what it is you get, it's not a hundred, it's not cotton. It's a sketchbook and the colors are very vibrant, but they are not light fast because they are dyes. But you know, for sketchbooks, that doesn't matter. We just have to understand what it is that it's meant for. And it's meant for traveling, hiking, you know, on the go. And I think it's very practical, really like it. I mean, you can put it, throw it in uh, your little purse and off you go and it's a good water brush that they gave me to go with it's again it's great for little sketches you know if I wanted to do a little bit more bigger washes and stuff then I would want one that had a bigger bigger bristle but I have that so this this one is ideal for little wildflower sketches and things like that with that I bid you goodbye for now and we'll see each other soon I hope I have another demo coming up where we're just gonna go back to regular good old-fashioned watercolors and watercolor paper. I think we have some flowers coming in my next YouTube video. I think it's time for some flowers. So I wish you well. I'll see you soon in another video.